Let's get a round of applause. Sean Richards. Thank you, Sean. Sean, I got I got to have you first uh, speak a little bit about this documentary. What inspired you to uh, to create this? The day, actually what happened was the day I heard that um, Richard Brooker had passed, a friend had messaged me about that, and I couldn't believe it. Um, met him three different times in 2006, and he, you know, I've met a number of people from the film world in the last 20 years, and he was the only one that was like, you know, he has his pictures on the table from the movies in, and, you know, so you need to ask him about, you know, if he had stories about making the movie, and he, he says, well, I have plenty of stories, but he says, but I want to know about you. What makes you you? What do you like? And I've never had anybody I've ever met in the film world say that. Like, that's, wow, uh, me, what? <laughs> Um, he was special. He was unique. Uh, he was, um, I found out through making this project, a very humble man. I didn't even know, um, you know, like half, probably more like three quarters as the interviews came in and I kept discovering more and more and he didn't really talk about any of it. He wasn't a, a, a braggart. He, he didn't boast. Um, I think, you know, gene, you know, you want to say genius, Jimmy, I think Richard had genius. I think he had humility. I think that he was a people person and, um, you know, and it's like Carolyn Williams says in the documentary, you know, his favorite place to be was in the bar telling stories. And, um, actually truth be told, I'll try and make this as quick as possible. Uh, first time I met him, he, he was not in the greatest mood. And I had visited the Part 3 set and uh, shot it, you know, arranged a visit through the Values A Brothers. And I was sharing pictures with him. You know, and the, and uh, he's like, yeah, that's good. I was like, oh, okay. Um, well, maybe uh, just get a picture with uh, I Have the Mask. He's like, no, nah, just you and me. And I'm like, okay, uh, fine. And that was the first time I met him. And then a few months went by, and I was at this other event, and he happened to be there. And there were the pictures on the table. And I looked up, and he's looking right at me. And he's like, <clears throat> I know you, don't I? I? I'm terrible with names, but I never forget a face. And I was like, well, yeah, yeah we, we met, you know, a couple months ago. He's like, a couple months ago? Oh, no. That wasn't Orlando, was it? I was like, yeah. And he said, uh, you know, I, w I want to apologize. I'm from England. I was over there, and I came back. I was jet lagged. I was tired. I was not feeling well. I should have canceled, but I had a commitment. And um, I want to say I'm sorry about that. And I was like, wow. And then he said, hey, you want to grab a picture? And I said, sure, Richard. And then that's the picture of Richard and I in uh, the documentary. Uh, so, yeah, that's... So basically, uh, you know, when I'd heard he died, um, I wanted to, I was in, I'm from Indiana, so I was living in Indianapolis at the time. Um, you know, I, I had known that the cabin had burned down. And so what I wanted to do, what it started out as, was just going to be a, probably a two minute video with photography and some high eight camera footage for the fans who can no longer visit the set. And was, at the end, it was going to be dedicated to Richard with some music. And life ended up taking me west. <laughs> and I ended up uh, landing a day job in the Pasadena area. And um, then I just was like, well, now I'm here. I want to make this as good as it possibly could be because I found out there was a lot of part three cast members still in the area. 
<laughs> so I just started knocking on doors and saying, this is me and this is what I'm looking to do. And I want to make this, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, just a, a, re a respectful reflection of this man. Uh, anything you'd like to share because the fans can no longer get to meet him. And, um, and it just kind of, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of stress. I guarantee you all this gray is not genetic. <laughs> so that's pretty much the story and the rest is uh, history, I guess. All right, so do we have any questions for Sean? Or Tracy or Harry? Because I have questions brewing. <laughs> Not, nothing, nothing. Oh. Well, I don't know. You look like you were about to raise your hand. You and the tattoos. All right, I'll go with um, Tracy. Now, you didn't have really any screen time with him because you got killed probably by a, another person. You know what I mean? So, did you see Richard on set in makeup and did he come up to you or did he just kind of brush you off because he wants to be in character and scare all the actors. You know, um, in fact, when I was interviewed for this documentary, I, I was kind of um, concerned because I didn't really feel like I had that much to add. Um, I didn't really ever work with Richard. Um, it was a bunch of kids. We were a bunch of kids and Richard was an adult. <laughs> We were a bunch of teenagers making a movie together and having fun. And Richard was a few years older than all of us. And he was, he tried to stay in character and he was, he, he was more mature. And, um, so we didn't hang out together and we didn't have scenes together. I never had any scenes with him. Um, what I got to experience with him was that he was a really respectful, quiet, kind man, um, didn't screw around, was serious about when he was needed, he was there, he was ready, knew his, got his marks, hit his marks, um, and um, was just a good person. But I, did, I didn't actually ever have to, you know, get to work with him, because even when I, the scene where I was killed, the effects people ended up doing that. Uh, he didn't do that. So I didn't have a whole lot of time uh, with him, personally. Okay. Okay, here it is. All right. All right. Da, da, da. So far, you're all sitting there going like, are we going to have to watch this crap? All right. But I'm going to tell you this. Uh, Sean, Sean's depiction was like, kind of, kind of like a little fanboy, sort of. Uh, he, uh, would you, I probably got to know Richard better, better than most. Uh, but did I? I don't know. You told me you closed the bars down. The we night. closed, <laughs> Richard and I closed every bar and every convention and sometimes three or four of them. Uh, I mean, in Kentucky, we are legends in Kentucky. I feel like Ric Flair, man. You're like the Hollywood Ric Flair. We were, we were legends. But I got to know Richard pretty damn well. And, uh, I'll tell you the story just before he died, but I'm just going to tell you, prepare to be shocked. You, you know, okay, Richard Brooker, the guy who played Friday the 13th, played Jason, first guy to wear the mask, right? You're going to just sit and you're going to go like, holy smoke. That's what you're going to say when you watch this. But I'll just tell you the last thing, the greatest thing was just before he died, we had done a convention. And it was, we were flying back. We, we had to take a little tiny airline uh, back to Chicago and then change, change flights. So, and if you know Richard, this man w could schmooze anybody. So I told him, I said, okay, I'm going to go get a pizzas for us in Chicago. You uh, do whatever you're going to do. Okay. I come back. I got the pizzas. He goes... I got us the seats. I said, what do you mean? He goes, the ones in the coach, you know, where you can stretch out and you're, you know, saving people in case there's a crash. <laughs> right. Sure. Anyway, okay. So he got, he talked to you, 
the lady at the desk, the, all four of us from going back, we all had the cool seats, we all had pizzas, and we're having the great thing. He looks over to me and he goes, this is a great pizza. And I'm going like, these are great seats. <laughs> and then like about a week later, Richard passed. Oh. But I, wa I just want to tell you, prepare to hear some stuff, and you're going to go like, this guy was so much more than a good English actor who played Jason. You're gonna you're gonna be shocked. Okay? Is that good? That was fantastic, Harry. Oh yeah. That was wonderful, Harry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've, Harry has told me a couple of those, and uh, I was like, oh man, this is epic Richard Brooker stuff, but epic Harry Manfredini. <laughs> Uh, and yes, to, to compound on to what you're saying, yes, uh, from coming from a somewhat of a fanboy, uh, I was an eighties horror kid and, uh, like a lot of kids in the eighties. And, um, and I was, you know, told my mom and stepdad, I couldn't watch these movies. I go to my dad's every other weekend. I, dad, that's a scary movie. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. Is that all right with your mom? It's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't think you're telling me the truth. All right, two things. One, they're not real. Number two, don't tell your mom. <laughs> and so I started, and then I felt like I was a kid in a candy store, like getting away with something. Then I found out years later, you know, from Dad's friends, and that's my second documentary I'm doing is The Wonderment, the Rick Kern story, Dad. Um, he was that way too. I get that from him, that... He, he was always pushing things and trying things that want, you know, like to see if you could just get away with it. And now I was like, now I know where I get it from. Um, but looking back after the documentary was done, I didn't even realize this when I was making it because I was an eighties horror kid. Yeah. But I'm not a huge horror person in the last 20 years. And, you know, being over 20 something, uh, cause it's a different time. It's different horror movies now and it's not the same. Um, but you know, I actually enjoy, you know, stories that move you or stories that teach you something about life. And once the documentary was put together, I realized I took the eighties horror kid that was and mixed it with the adult film watcher that I am today. And I, and then we got what we got. <laughs> so. Guys, you're coming on momentarily, uh, but Sean, you know, you know, you wrote it, you acted in it, you directed it. Was there anything else that you did? <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, it was the, it was my idea, and so I was exec producer, um, I wrote the narrative that Paul Kratka hosts for the documentary. Uh, I acted, well, a little stupid thing with the trespassers. <laughs> but truth be told, I directed this movie. Uh, Kevin Phipps, I hired him to direct it. A um, director for hire. He sold me on his director reel. None, but then I found out through working this project, none of those had been done. And I was like, wow. So basically, he directed, I'm going to give credit where credit's due. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm definitely that kind of guy. But, you know, like, um, you know, he directed the, the trespasser pseudo death sequence with Jason popping up to deal with them. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, and then he gave it to an editor to throw together. He didn't sit in with them, I found out. And then he directed the night party scene. Um, and that was just given to us as shot footage. But, you know, as far as setting up the interviews, coming up with the questions, conducting the interviews, and then sitting um, with my editors through 12, 12 hour sessions to put this together, that's all director detail. And, you know, it's, I guess, sort of a just very small bombshell. I mean, whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, it is what it is, and um, 
yeah, I, I unfortunately find out that, you know, some people like to come in and take credit for things that others do, and that's not right. I'm a big believer in you get what you give and to do the right thing. So that's it. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. We're going to pop this on momentarily. Let's give a round of applause. Harry Manfredini, Tracy Savage, and Mr. Sean Richards. This documentary, guys, something special. It's coming up. This is Bo Billingsley, and you're watching the Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like and subscribe. But more importantly, have fun and follow your fandoms.